Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelic for Grinderschool.com. Uh, today we're going to be looking at short stack strategy in MTTs. Uh, this short is part one of three and it's going to cover an introduction to short stack strategy um, with a main focus of this video on shoving. And we're also going to look at the resources available to you. So before we begin, you're going to need a poker stove. Uh, if you haven't already got that, head over to pokerstove.com and download that now. Uh, you're going to need pen, pencil and paper because this is going to be an interactive uh, short where you're going to be doing the work along along with me. Uh, you're going to need a calculator, so one on your computer will probably do as long as it can do um, scientific calculations like x to the power of y. And you're also going to need access to the internet, which if you're watching this video you probably already have. So let's get started. So what is short stack strategy in MTTs? Um, it's a strategy for playing with the stack size of uh, anything less than 25 big blinds. Um, we've got a few options when we when we have less than 25 big blinds. Um, we can shove, we can call shoves, and we can um, re-steal. Now I've given you an idea of when we might look to shove um, with a stack size of say less than 16 big blinds. Um, we can call shoves at any stack size, say if we've got 50 big blinds and there's a shove uh, 14 big blinds, we need to know if we can call that or not. Um, and also we can re-steal, and I put there between 16 and 24 big blinds. I would guess ideally it's but six, between 16 and 20 big blinds, um, but I put there 16 to 24 big blinds just to give you an idea um, of stack sizes that we might like to look at um, re-stealing. And we're also going to look at what resources are available to us um, in a, Order to to work out um, whether we should whether we should shove at a given a given point. So here's an example. Um, Hero has king queen off suit with just over twelve big blinds. Um, the blinds are fifty one hundred. Um, there are five players left to act behind us. Everyone folds around to us. Do we shove or do we fold? Now some of you are probably thinking, okay, this is definitely a shove. I know it is. Um, some of you thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm not quite sure um, if this is a shove. You know, there are a few players to up behind us. Um, you know, I'd sooner, I'd sooner shove a much, much stronger hand. Um, so, what are the, what is there available to us to be able to work out whether this is a shove? Now, there are various resources available. Uh, Sit and Go Wizard is probably the the best piece of software um, for us to work out. Uh, whether we should whether we should shove in. I'm not going to go into too much detail about about that at the moment because I want to focus on the free resources available to us uh, rather than the ones you have to pay for. Um, but Sit and Go Wizard is, is is brilliant in that you can set the calling range of all your opponents um, and it will uh, tell you exactly which which range of hands you can profitably shove. Um, you can look for a push bot or push fold chart uh, just searching in Google and that will give you an idea. Um, of the range of hands that you can shove from a, from a given position. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to look too much at that. You can you can search on Google for that. Uh, what I am going to look at today though is looking at the ICM Nash calculator. Um, you can head over to Holden Resources. Uh, the links there. Um, we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, you can use Poker Stove, the right formula, a calculator, and a pen and paper, which we're going to also do today. And if that gets a bit too much, uh, too much maths, then I've included my shoving calculator for you to have a have a play around with, um, which takes away the sort of heavy heavy maths involved with this. Um, so let's have a quick look at the ICM Nash calculator now. If I just look through to the internet, um, here you can see this. We're at holdonresources.net, uh, the ICM calculator. Uh, what I've done is put all the stack sizes in, uh, starting with under the gun. Uh, this is us, 12 to 5. Um, and I've set the big blind and the small blind uh, correctly. Here you put in if there was an ante. Um, you'll notice that the structure at the moment is set for a 9-man, 10-man sit and go. What we want to do is change that just to, to 1. Uh, and then we can click calculate and it will give us a range of hands that we can we can profitably shove. So let's click calculate. Okay, so we are here under gun plus three. Uh, and it's saying that we should we can shove 13.3% of hands. So if we scroll down, 
um, we can have a look at what that looks like. So 13.3% of hands, uh, 3s plus, ace 9 suited plus, ace 5 suited and ace 4 suited, ace jack off suit plus, king 9 suited plus, king queen off suit, queen 10 suited plus, and jack 10 suited. Uh, which gives us, you know, a, a pretty good range of, of hands and a pretty good idea of what sort of hands we can be we can be shoving in this spot. The only limitation is, is that we expect our opponents to be calling uh, correctly. Uh, so, for example, the guy next to us will be calling with ace plus ace jack suited plus an ace queen offsuit, um, and then we can scroll down, cut off similar range. Um, Again, but in similar range to get through to the to the big blind, whose range is always going to be um, slightly looser because there are fewer play. Well, there's no there are no players left to act um, behind him, so he's range five plus ace ten suit plus ace jack off suit plus. Um, so as we can see, uh, king queen off suit is in that range. So if we were uh, pretty sure that everyone was calling correctly behind us, then we would be able to profitably shove king queen off suit. Um, but what if we know that the players behind us aren't calling correctly. Perhaps they're calling slightly looser. What what can we what can we do then? So this is when uh, we need to use poker stove and maths in order to, to work out uh, whether we can profitably shove in this spot. So when we when we're trying to work out um, the expected value of a shove. Uh, this is what we need to know. We need to know our stack size, which in this case is uh, 1225 chips. Uh, we need to know our opponent's stack size if it's smaller than ours. Um, that's known as the effective effective stack because we can only win that many chips uh, from them. We can't we can't win our amount of chips from them if they don't have them. Uh, we need to know the calling range of our opponent. So here I've I've gone for a I guess uh, a fairly um, standard range here, 8 plus, ace 10 suited plus, ace jack off suit plus, and king queen suited, which is 7.4%. Um, we need to know how many players there are still left to out behind us, which in this case is 5. And we need to know how our hand plays against our opponent's calling range. So if I bring up Poker Stove, um, we can see that I've put in the hand 7.4%, ace plus, king queen suited, ace jack off suit plus, ace 10 suited. And we can put in King Queen offsuit. And that shows us that King Queen offsuit wins 33.552% of the time. So once we know all that, then we need to look at the various formulas that help us work it out. So if we fold, our stack is, is going to be exactly the same as it is, 1225 chips. If we shove and everyone folds, our stack is going to be uh, 1,375 chips, which is our stack, and the and the pot, which is 150 chips. If we shove, get called, and win, our stack is going to equal 2,600 chips, um, which in this case is our stack plus the effective stack plus the pot. Now, uh, as I said, the effective stack is the same as our stack, so it's, it's twice our stack plus the pot. Um, there are limitations to these calculations in that if you, you shove and one of the blinds calls, um, the amount of chips you win will be will be less. Uh, that's simply because um, they have uh, fewer chips to call because they've already added uh, chips to the pot, and it also takes money uh, takes chips away from away from the pot. Uh, but if you shove and the person next to you calls, then um, our our stack and we and we win. Um, our stack would go up to two thousand six hundred. So there are limitations to these calculations. Um, the ideal way around that is to to work out um, the expected value of, of shoving again and um, against everyone's uh, every one of your opponent's call range, um, but I mean that's that's that would take a, a really really long time, and this is a, a little bit of a shortcut to that. So the chance of everyone folding when we shove is worked out as follows: one minus a to the power b, where a is the single calling range of our opponent. Um, in this case, it was 7.4%. And B is the number of players left to act, which in this case was 5. So we can have, um, as you can see, example there, 1 minus 0 0.074 to the power 5. Um, so the chance of everyone folding when, when we shove is 68.086%. What we then do is multiply that number by the stack size above. 
Um, I'm, as you can see, we come out with 936 chips if everyone if everyone folds, um, which happens 68% of the time. Then we need to work out the chance of us winning when we get calls. Um, so again, slightly slightly more complicated here. Um, we have one minus and then one minus a to the power b in brackets times c, where a again is a single calling range, b is the number of players left to act, and c is the percentage we win the hand. So I've given the example of broken it up um, a little bit more. So in the brackets, we've got one minus 0.074 to the power of five again. Um, we have one minus that this time, simply because that's the amount of times that we get called. Uh, as you can see, the chance of us, the chance of everyone folding is 68%. So therefore, the chance of uh, players of, of being called is uh, is 30, 32%. Um, so we then multiply that by the uh, percentage uh, of time that we that we win the hand. So it's broken up there, um, and that comes out at the end 10.708%. So. We then multiply this number by the stack size above if we shove it for the win, which is 2,600, and that gives us 278.4 chips. But if we add these two numbers together, now uh, we can work out whether uh, shove is going to be more profitable than folding. So we've added those two numbers together, 936 plus 278, we come out with 1214.58, uh, we're going to round that up to 1215, we take off the number of chips um, if we'd folded and we can see that the number that comes out in the end is minus 10 which means that this is a negative um, negative chip uh, expected value spot so perhaps isn't something isn't a, a situation uh, where you where you want to be shoving obviously if we think that the calling range is slightly tighter uh, for, of our opponents then we we can be Profitably shoving king queen up suit, um, but in this particular spot, if we're we're pretty sure that uh, all of our opponents behind are calling with a 7.4% call range, then this is actually uh, a good spot to fold. Right, we're already about 12 minutes, so what I'm going to do is end the short here uh, and split this into two sections. Uh, so just to recap, we've looked at um, what short stack strategy is, uh, when we should be looking to shove and how to evaluate our play using the various resources available to us. Uh, in the next section, we're going to look at um, giving you an opportunity to do some calculations. Uh, I'll introduce my shoving calculator and then um, give you a couple more examples to have a look through in your own time. Okay, so this has been Gazellig for grinderschool.com. And until next time, good luck at the tables. Cheers. Bye.